Hello and welcome back to California Geology. Today I want to talk about some of the physical properties of minerals. Uh, these are the properties that are determined by the crystalline internal arrangement of atoms. Uh, we can test these. It, it deals with hardness, color, uh, uh, maybe the, the luster of the mineral. So let's look over here. The first one I want to look at is this uh, property called streak. Some minerals will will leave a characteristic color when you scratch them up against a, a porcelain uh, uh, plate. In this case, you, know, you, you would scratch the mineral across the porcelain plate and you'd record the color, which would be diagnostic for that mineral. And also some minerals will give you uh, uh, an odor, especially this mineral here called sphalerite. Sphalerite is a, is a submetallic mineral. I often call it a, a non-metallic resinous. You kind of see it's kind of that resin. You can see it has good cleavage because I see the steps going down there. Um, but when I scratch the sphalerite, and when you do a streak, you want to do a, a good hard streak, maybe a couple of times. And you can see it's a, a, a light yellow streak, very faint yellow. And the key thing about this streak, when you smell it, it smells like rotten eggs because a, a sphalerite is a zinc sulfide. So you're, you're smelling this sulfur, sulfur or uh, a gas coming off there. So yellow streak, sulfur smell, very diagnostic of this mineral, sphalerite. Another mineral that I want to test is, is um, pyrite. You may know it as fool's gold. Pyrite uh, is an iron sulfide. Uh, it will not give you an odor, but one thing about pyrite, it's, it's a hard mineral, so we know it's not gold because uh, if you bite into, uh, into pyrite, you'll break your teeth. <laughs> uh, but if, if you bite into gold, gold will bend a little bit. So uh, in this case, when I streak the pyrite, note that it gives me a dark black streak. Dark black streak, very characteristic of pyrite. Gold will give you a gold streak, not a black streak. Uh, then I have a uh, hematite, the next one here. Hematite, in fact, this is a, called specular hematite. A very nice, pretty, uh, sometimes these can be polished and made into, into jewelry. But when I do hematite, it's also going to give me, well, in fact, look at that. You got to kind of, it gives me a red streak. Uh, hematite, that's super characteristic of this mineral because hematite is an iron oxide. A rust, right? And look at that. It's showing you that characteristic color, right? This mineral left that red, uh, brick red streak. Again, very diagnostic of hematite. And then uh, um, galena is the last one. Galena is a really pretty mineral. Uh, one thing you'll see right away about this mineral, it has all these sharp edges or 90 degree angles. And it has excellent cleavage. You can see the steps going, you know, going up from here to there, right? All those steps. And the, this is a, a good cleavage at about 90 degrees. And when I, when I do the streak test on this mineral, it should give me another black. Yeah, look at that, kind of another dark gray. In fact, that's dark gray. So dark gray for Galena. Also, Galena has an extremely uh, uh, strong heft. Uh, the heft, meaning how much it weighs, uh, um, its density is very high because it's, it's a lead sulfide. So it's a lot of lead very heavy. And again, <laughs> you see the gray streak here versus the hematite's red streak. All right, so that's one, one property. Uh, then we have this um, color. Color is, is, um, is best used to distinguish between uh, uh, mafic minerals and felsic minerals, right? So if it's going to be mafic uh, and have, I mean, remember, magnesium and iron, you're going to see that iron really come out as a dark color. Uh, so because if you think about it, you know, here I say not, color is not very, um, color is not very uh, uh, diagnostic because uh, quartz, for example, quartz can be clear. Uh, quartz could also be this nice rose quartz right here. See the rose quartz, so clear. Uh, there's a variety called milky quartz as well. And then you've probably all heard of, of the, the amethyst here, right? So there's amethyst, uh, clear crystal quartz, Rose quartz. Here are three varieties of quartz, uh, all different colors, right? So, uh, color may or not may or may not help you, but certainly it can help you with um, mafic versus felsic. Now, in terms of hardness, we have this scale here called the Mohs hardness scale, and the Mohs hardness scale is more of a relative scale. It's a it's a strength of minerals. 
put under a, a, a pressure. And it's not a linear scale. For example, talc uh, or, or, is, is, or diamond is not 10 times stronger than talc. Uh, diamond's more on the order of, uh, of several, you know, several, well, no, corundum's about 8,000 times stronger. So, and diamond's going to be several thousand times stronger than corundum. So uh, it's not a relative scale. So if we go down the list here, we'll see that diamond is at number 10, the hardest mineral we know of. Uh, number nine, corundum. Uh, both diamond and corundum are, are, are not commonly used because they're, they're usually going to be uh, uh, precious gems, uh, diamond obviously, and then rubies are red, so corundum, uh, the ruby will be red. Any other colors like green or blue would be sap sapphires, and sapphires, and they're part of this corundum here. Then topaz, topaz is also a, a gem. It's a hard mineral, not, not very common again. But now we start getting to our common minerals. Quartz at number seven, K feldspar, orthoclase at number six, and then the all important uh, uh, knife blade, right? So a knife is at number five, right? And so if you can scratch a mineral, that means the mineral is gonna be softer than 5.5. Then we go to uh, apatite, which is a calcium phosphate, fluorite, calcium uh, fluoride, and then calcite, right? We've seen calcite before. And then your fingernail, another important one. Your fingernail is a tool. You can scratch a mineral. It's going to be softer than your fingernail. Then we go over here to number two, which is gypsum. And the softest one is talc. This is a mineral here called gypsum. You can see it has cleavage. You see the, the flashes and the kind of step down over here. This mineral is actually a variety called selenite gypsum. But you can see that I can scratch it with my fingernail right there. I put a little scratch in it just with my fingernail. So it's softer than 2.5. Um, so that's our, our gypsum mineral. Uh, we'll look at, at sphalerite here. And sphalerite, let's see, I think sphalerite should be softer here. I should be able to scratch it with my knife. And so there, there you go, I'm scratching it. So this is softer than my knife. So this would be considered one of these soft minerals. So hardness is an important uh, test we can do on minerals and quartz quartz here. We'll look at this quartz crystal. We'll see that uh, It's going to be hard and I cannot scratch It's in fact probably some of my metal is being rubbed off onto this quartz crystal Next category here is luster and luster Ideally luster is one of the first things you look at and it's going to be the way the mineral reflects light and there's two basic categories a mineral will either have a a metallic luster, like like our pyrite here, pyrite, metallic luster, brass, uh, our galena, very nice galena sample right here, metallic luster, and uh, hematite. I showed you the specular hematite right in here, right? All examples, good examples of metallic luster. Now, if it's non-metallic, then uh, we'll find that there's only a few of these metallic ones, maybe five or so that are common, but most other minerals are gonna be non-metallic. And uh, we're gonna have some adjectives to help us uh, uh, describe these, this luster. For example, I, I had um, the word vitreous. Vitreous describes quartz, shines like glass, shines like glass, that means vitreous. Uh, we could have something waxy, waxy is like talc. Talc is an example of something waxy. Or, um, in fact, I have santony right here, and I'm looking at this mineral over here called um, uh, ulexite. Ulexite is a borate mineral, and uh, common in the California deserts. And this has kind of a satiny luster, right? Non-metallic satiny luster. And then let's see what else. Uh, uh, pearly, pearly would be an example of muscovite mica. In fact, in in your in your um, uh, animation assignment, you'll you'll see some muscovite mica. And then uh, there's earthy, which is like clays. I talked about resinous earlier on, talking about this sphalerite. Right? Again, it's, it's whatever adjective you can, you can use to help you identify uh, that luster later on. All right, well, let's stop here.